I've made two bomber seat videos for YouTube. The first was for a pretty fancy seat made from aluminum. While many people like this seat, some were intimidated by the complexity of the construction. That led me to make a video of a bomber seat with a much simpler design. It was made from one piece of steel using a simple bending jig and very little welding was involved. I titled this video, Bomber Seat Made Easy. But a lot of people noted that I used some high-end tools for the fabrication. That brings me to this video, where I'll make a very nice bomber seat using simple processes, a very basic tool set, and no welding whatsoever. I've always had huge respect for Craig Knapp, one of the finest metal shapers in the country. Craig built some gorgeous seats for the Wedge Roadster that Dan Webb built for his daughter Ashley. The seat I'm making today is inspired by this simple but elegant design, with a few tweaks made to the size, shape, and construction details. The first step is making a mock-up from shipboard to work out the scale and size for each component. And I'm pretty happy with this shape now. It's based on a three-piece construction, so there are two side pieces, and each side piece has two bends in it, and there's one center piece that has a single bend in the center. So now I can scale up each component from my mock-up to make the patterns for the full-size seat. I disassembled my mock-up, and I made a full-size tracing of the side portion. And then I took this tracing to a large scale copy shop and had it scaled up to be full size. So this is the full size tracing. And this is just on regular weight paper. To make it more durable for the construction process, I'm going to glue this to a piece of chipboard. So I'll use spray glue for that. And then I'll trim on the edge with scissors. So here's my full size pattern. Now I can lay this on a piece of 18 gauge steel, mark around the edge, and trim the part out. I want the bends on the edges of the seat sides to have a taper. I want the radius to be an inch and a half at the back and it'll be two inches at the front. So I need to make a special fixture to allow that. And it's a pretty simple fixture. I'm going to put half discs on a board and bend the metal around that. So the first step is cutting the discs. So I'm going to make the marks for the four inch circle here. Four inch diameter, two inch radius. And I've just put a felt tip marker on a pair of dividers here. Works very nicely. And then I'll use the jigsaw to make these cuts. and I'll do a little sanding on these to smooth them off. I've done a layout here for the bending fixture. So these stations have to go in different locations. On the long leg of the seat side, the stations need to go from here to here. So that's how these stations will be positioned. But when it's time to bend the shorter side, I need to have an additional station in this location. I've already laid out the location and cut the station for that area. And I need one more station that goes on the back side of this. This is just to support it when I put the bending loads on it. So now I want to drill the pilot holes for the screws that will hold all these together. And I'm using a small drill that will be the pilot size for the drywall screws I'll be using. And drill these holes through. You can see I've laid out some larger holes. These are for the clamps that will hold this bending fixture to the table. So to make the holes for the clamps, I'll use an inch and a half spade bit. I'm going to make a very shallow cut on this side and then finish up from the back so I don't get so much tear out on these big holes. So 
So the holes are all made. Now I'll use the jigsaw to cut out the perimeter. I'll do some light sanding on this to smooth all the edges. So the parts are ready for assembly. It's very important to drill pilot holes for the screws, otherwise it'll just split the MDF. So let me show you how I'll do that. I'm going to position this station in a vise. Then I have a little support block that will hold this at the proper height. I'll get the edges lined up. And then I'll drill through with the pilot drill. Do the same thing on the big end. And then with the center station. Then I need to do that with this block as well. Now I need to open these holes up to fit the outside diameter of the screw. And the last step is to countersink these holes so the screws fit flush. And now I can assemble the parts. So there's our bending fixer. It's pretty simple, but let's see how it works. It's time to cut out the metal blank now. So this is just a scrap piece of seal I had about the right size. It's 18 gauge seal or 1.2 millimeters. And I'm going to orient this so the longest side of my pattern is against one of the factory edges on the metal to minimize the cutting needed. So I'll line this edge up and hold it in place with clamps so the pattern doesn't shift as I mark the perimeter. Then I'll use a felt tip marker to mark around the edge. I'm ready to do the cutting now, but I'm not going to cut this profile, and there's an important reason for that. I need some extra material here to get leverage to be able to put the bends in the metal. So I'm going to cut this area and this area cut off the excess here at this time, then I'll do the bending, and this curved cut will be made after the bending is completed. So let me mark the rest of the cuts I'll have to make right now. We're ready to do the cutting. And there's many ways to cut metal. To keep things simple, I'm going to be using a jigsaw today. And I have a fine tooth blade in the saw for cutting steel. So I'm going to orient this so the steel hangs over the edge of the table and I'll cut one little section at a time. I'll get my safety gear and I'll cut this edge first. So our first cut is done. I'll rotate this for the second cut. And now I'll cut this corner out. So the cutting's done. Now I'll use a file to straighten and smooth these cut edges.
The edges are all straightened and smooth and deburred. So now we can put the bends on this part. So I have my bending fixture set up on the table. Let's get the metal positioned into place. So the bottom edge of this form goes right against the edge of the metal. I'm going to move it in a little bit so this foot here has a place to touch the table. That'll keep this from rotating. And we'll bend the short side first. Then I'll use clamps to hold this together. And I'll make the first bend. I think you can see now how we need leverage on this part to make the bend. If it was cut short, I just wouldn't have enough force to be able to put the bend in the part. And we'll go right up to 90 degrees. That looks great. So we'll make the bend on the other side now. Line up the edge of the form with the edge of the metal. Clamp it into place. Everything looks good, so I'm ready to make the second bend now. I'll go right up to 90. I think we're there. So there's the part with both bends in it. I think you can see it looks great on both sides. There is a little bump here, and once the seat is put together, I'll use a hammer and dolly to smooth this bump out. I don't want to do it now, because if I hammer this down now, it'll open up the angle a little bit. But look at how beautiful that curve is. It's very difficult to make a tapered curve with accuracy unless you bend it over a form of some sort. So that's why I took the time to make the wooden form. So I'm very happy with the way it looks now and we can move on to the next step. I used the same procedure to make the second seat side and that's a done deal. So we're getting ready to bend the part that will become the seat back and the seat bottom. And one thing I need to know at this point is the precise angle to make the bend. So I've made a paper template to show me that angle with some precision. So now we can get set up to make that bend. Here's the metal blank for the seat back and bottom. I've cut the width accurately, but I've left it long on both ends because it's very hard to make a bend accurately enough so that the ends will match the parts it's meeting. So these are just going to run long on both ends and once the seat is assembled then I'll know exactly where to trim these ends to make it fit perfectly. So my plan was to roll this over a four inch diameter piece of tubing and as it turns out I don't have a piece of tubing long enough to do this. So I made another simple bending fixture and this diameter is four inches so this will do the same thing as a four inch tube and the solid line shows where the edge of my form touches the metal so let's get this set up on the bench I'll get everything clamped into place and then we can make our bend And I'll use my template here to see when I have the bend to the right angle. It's perfect. So I can assemble all the parts now. And it's starting to look like a bomber seat. The next thing I want to do is to lay out the holes for the fasteners that will hold the pieces together. Now the traditional way to hold the bomber seat together is with rivets. But because I'm keeping it simple this time, I'm going to use button head screws, which are much easier to install, and they have very much the same look. So I'm going to do a layout of the holes where the fasteners go, and the first thing I need to know is exactly where the ends of this center part will be trimmed. So I'm making marks with a felt tip marker at all of the edges that will be trimmed, and that will be my reference for laying out the holes for the fasteners. Okay, I can disassemble this now and lay out the holes. So the panel overlap I've designed is three quarters of an inch. And I want the fasteners to be centered, so I've drawn a line three eighths of an inch from all the edges. And I want the screws to be spaced a half inch from the ends of the panels. So I've made lines where the hole pattern starts. And there will be five equally spaced holes on this side and six equally spaced holes on this side. So I've laid out the center of the top hole, 
and I've set this pair of dividers with a felt tip marker to lay out even spacing on this side. So all the hole centers are marked and I'm going to drill the holes so the next step is to center punch each hole. And now I'll drill the holes. I'll put this over the edge of the table and clamp it into place. I'm using a clearance drill for a number eight screw. I put a little piece of plastic hose over the drill bit so that the tip of the drill chuck won't put marks on the metal when the drill breaks through. So let's get these holes drilled. So the holes are all drilled. When you drill holes in sheet metal, it leaves a burr on the back side. And to get rid of the burr, I'm going to use a countersink. So the countersink does a great job of deburring the holes. Now I can assemble this, and I'm going to match drill through these holes into the side pieces. When I clamp the parts together, I want to have a three-quarter inch overlap. So to achieve that, I'm using three-quarter inch tape as a guide. I'll lay the tape down so one edge touches the edge of the side piece. And then when I put the panels together, I'll make sure that the edge of the seat bottom and back just touches that tape line. So that's all set up. Now I can match drill through these holes into the side piece. So I'll disassemble this, deburr all the holes, then I'll do the same thing to the other side. With all the holes drilled, I can assemble all the parts. And the next thing I want to do is to trim the edges of this center piece. So to make it a little easier to do that, I'll flip this upside down. I'll clamp a straight edge tied up against these surfaces. Then I'll use a scriber to mark a straight line. I'm going to open up these areas a little bit. So I'll make a mark right on the edge. I'll flip this around and do the bottom. Now I'll disassemble this and trim the edges. I'll trim the ends of this first, and I've clamped it securely to my workbench so it can't vibrate as I'm cutting. Now I'll work this edge with a file to make it straight and smooth. I drew a line three quarters of an inch away from this edge, and then I used a circle template to make a curved end on this line that met the scribe lines on the panel. So now I'm ready to cut this out. And I'll file this to smooth it up. Now it's time to make the curved cuts on the side pieces. And again, I've got this clamped up very sturdily so it can't vibrate when I'm cutting. So now I'll file this edge to clean it up and make it smooth. I trimmed the second seat side and I've assembled all the pieces. So it's really starting to look like a bomber seat now. One of the last things I want to tune up were these bumps in the corners. 
and I was going to do that freehand with a hammer and dolly, but I have a new idea. I've cut a piece of MDF to be a really snug fit on the inside of the seat side, so I'm going to fixture this up so this form block is vertical, then I'll carefully hammer the metal down against that form block, and I think that should do a perfect job. So let's get set up for that. So I've mounted this former on a simple wooden stand to hold it stationary. And again, my plan is to use gravity to hold the seat tight against that form. So all I need to do now is to tap this edge down tight against the former, and it should give it a nice uniform shape. So that's really done a beautiful job of rounding that corner off. This seat's actually pretty comfortable. When I came up with the design, I was thinking of a wing chair. So I accentuated the curve here and here. But I find that this curve actually bumps my upper arm. So I'm going to cut this curve back about an inch and a quarter. And to keep this curve proportionate, I'll remove a smaller amount on the bottom. I trim the edges and the seat fits me perfectly now. The final step will be to cap this edge. I went online and I found this cap strip. It's kind of a C shape and it's metal reinforced and it just slips over the edge of the metal and has a very nice snug fit. So the seat is finished and just like I promised, I use simple tools for every step. Most bomber seats have a reinforced edge. I'm leaving that step out to keep the fabrication simple. If you want to strengthen the edges, you could add extra bracing when you mount the seat. I'll make another video that shows how to take this seat to the next level. That will include stiffening the edges. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you next time. I love making these videos and I'm honored that you're watching. Please like, subscribe, and click the bell to be notified about new videos. I read every comment and I do my best to answer all questions. If you like what I'm doing, please click the Patreon link and become one of the great people who help me create new videos.